Hello and welcome to this video where we will discuss how to perform ligation of arteries in the nose that are causing severe nosebleeds or epistaxis. My name is Stephen Hauser. I am an otolaryngologist, specifically a rhinologist, in practice in Cleveland, Ohio. Epistaxis is typically treated with cautery as well as packing, but when these efforts fail, then it may be necessary to bring the patient for surgical ligation of arteries or perhaps embolization per interventional radiology. After unpacking a patient, it's essential to identify where the patient may be bleeding from. In this picture, we see the patient is bleeding from high on their left side. They're actually bleeding from their anterior ethmoid artery, which would be ligated. Here's a view on the left side of clips being in place on the anterior ethmoid artery through a Lynch incision, which is on the medial aspect of the patient's orbit. A Lynch incision tends to heal very well, as seen in this patient four months after his left Lynch incision for severe epistaxis. It is uncommon to actually so clearly see the anterior ethmoid artery as it is seen here. Typically, we cannot ligate the anterior ethmoid artery through the nasal cavity, but rather need to resort to the Lynch incision going through the orbit externally. Of the arterial supply to the nose, the anterior ethmoid artery is smaller than the sphenopalatine artery. I tell my residents that it is similar to a straw versus a hose. The location of the sphenopalatine artery exiting through the sphenopalatine foramen is seen here. It is below the posterior aspect of the middle turbinate. To ligate the sphenopalatine artery, I start by making a hole through the posterior fontanelle of the patient's maxillary sinus, finding then what I term the corner or the back wall of the maxillary sinus where it joins with the side wall of the nose. In an axial view, looking from above, we now see this corner, which has the opening to the maxillary sinus at the inferior aspect of the view and the lateral nasal wall to the right. We will then see the mucosa raised up and the artery tethered to the mucosa, identifying it as it exits the sphenopalatine foramen. In this endoscopic view, we are now seeing the patient's right sphenopalatine artery as the mucosa is raised up, and we can see the artery exiting the sphenopalatine foramen. I use a one millimeter angled kerosin to enter into the sphenopalatine foramen and resect bone overlying the artery, so the artery actually has more play to allow me to more easily apply clips to it. Medium clips are then applied by an endoscopic clip applier, and then suction electrocautery is directed at this region as well to disturb the periosteum surrounding the artery to allow these clips to be locked into place. Another endoscopic view, this showing a patient on the left side with their sphenopalatine artery exiting through the sphenopalatine foramen and the mucosa being lifted up. 